Hi, I'm Eva Murphy from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo, and this is my Leave Insert Maths Grinds channel. I'll regularly add new videos for both higher and ordinary level maths, so make sure you subscribe below and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. Okay, uh, Leave Inserts, let's have a look at um, SIRDs and, and, and what's on, what we have to do with SIRDs on the Leave Insert course. Um, so what I've written out here is some theory just on the background of SIRDs and, and some properties of SIRDs that are good to know. So the first one here is, is reducing SIRDs. So when you get the square root of um, a product um, under SIRDs, under a square root sign, so a SIRD is... I suppose the definition of a third is a square root number that cannot be simplified anymore. Okay, so when you see a square root sign or when you're asked to leave your answer in third form, um, expect a square root to be in the answer. So some of the properties, if you have, for example, um, square root of eight, you can break it up into the product of um, its factors. So in other words, the square root of eight, I could write as the square root of four by the square root of two. Okay, if you get the square root of four, you get two, and that's where the answer two root two comes from. Okay, so if you put root eight into your calculator, because your calculator is, is, is programmed to reduce thirds down, if you put root eight into your calculator, you will see you get two root two. Okay, and it's coming from this property here. In the same way, you can simplify thirds that are being divided by, again, splitting the, the, the fraction into the square root of the top over the square root of the bottom. OK, and you can treat each of them individually. So if you see a number on the bottom here um, that's a perfect square, such as 64, you know, 8 eighths are, are 64. So the square root of 64 is 8. 50 then um, is not a perfect square number, but it is 25 by 2. 25 is a perfect square, so that's where 5 root 2 over 8 comes from. Um, adding or subtracting thirds. If you have, and it's, it's nearly easier to show you an example, but if you have A root B and you are adding or subtracting C root B from it, you literally just add or subtract the numbers on the outside, and it's that many root Bs. So, for example, if you have two root 3s, plus three root threes, then that is the same as five root three. Okay, just the same as two X plus three X would give you five X. Multiplying thirds, um, yeah, so root A by root B is the square root of AB. Okay, the one where this comes out on its own is when you are multiplying the same number by itself. So root five by root five, is the square root of 25, which is five, okay? If I had root six by root six, it would be the square root of 36, which is six, okay? Extend that then, if you have root x, so any number at all, by root x, that's the square root of x squared, which is equal to x. So it always is, if it, you're multiplying it by itself, you will always end up getting the, the number without the square root sign. OK, and then when you've got different numbers, again, it's using this property number one, five sixes are root 30. And of course, you could break it down if you so wished. OK, not that I think that will break down much more. OK, then multiplying is, is very important to be able to multiply two uh, terms with um, two brackets with two terms in each bracket by by each other. So seven by seven, 49, seven by root two is plus seven root two, minus root two by seven is minus seven root two, and then minus by plus is a minus root two by root two, it's two. Okay, uh, you, the thirds cancel and you just get 47. Okay, this last one here that I'm showing you is a really important property. When you multiply a third by itself with the opposite sign, the thirds cancel. Okay, and we use that property quite a bit um, especially in division of thirds, but then we use a version of it in, in a chapter called complex numbers as well. Okay, so the thirds cancel when you multiply it by itself with the opposite sign. Okay, and that brings me on then to, to dividing thirds, where you have to what's called rationalize the denominator. So um, 
thirds are an example of an irrational number. And in maths, we do not like to leave irrational numbers in the, um, in the denominator. OK, so you're always changing the denominator to be a, a rational number. OK, so how do we do that? Well, if you get a question which is one over a minus root b, for example, you end up multiplying it by um, the bottom line with the opposite sign. So you change the sign in the middle, OK, so that it becomes a plus root b. OK, so that's what I do for the bottom line. I do that because I'm using this property here because it will cancel the thirds. OK, what I do to the bottom, then I must also do to the top. Why? Because this number here is effectively 1. So 10 over 10, 1. Uh, 3 over 3, 1. Uh, a plus root b over a plus root b is 1. So itself over itself is 1. OK, and you know when you multiply anything by 1, you never change the original, the, the original sum. OK, so although it looks like I'm making a huge change to it, the net effect is that I am multiplying it by one. So I'm not overly changing it. OK, why do I do it? I do it so I can make the number on the bottom a rational number. OK, rationalize the denominator. OK, so instead of it being really a division like this one, 12 over 3 minus root 2, it ends up being a bit of a, a multiplication where you multiply you figure out what needs to be on the bottom because that's 3 minus root 2, so it has to be 3 plus root 2 so that the thirds cancel. And then I must multiply the top by the same thing. OK, and then you'll see the bottoms cancel. And um, oh yeah, I deleted a line off that somewhere. Um, the bottoms cancel and you are left with, well, the thirds on the bottom cancel and you are left with just a rational number on the bottom and then insert on the top. OK, so that's the type of stuff that I want to practice. So I have these um, type of examples here. So x is 4 plus root 3 over root 2 and y is 4 minus root 3 over root 2. And it says find in its simplest form x plus y. OK. So how do we do that? X plus Y is 4 plus root 3 over root 2 plus 4 minus root 3 over root 2. OK. Common denominator, 4 plus root 3 plus 4 minus root 3. OK, they were all over root 2 anyway. My minus root 3 and my plus root 3 cancel. So I'm left with 8 over root 2. OK, if I multiply that above and below by root 2s, on the top I will get 8 root 2, and on the bottom I will get root 2 by root 2, which is 2. So that is equal to 4 root 2. OK, so you can see all of those little properties of thirds are coming into play. OK, common denominator because it was a fraction. OK, my thirds just happened to cancel because that's what my x and y was. OK, I need to rationalize the denominator. So I multiplied above and below by root 2 over root 2. OK, then it's checking to see, can you multiply third? So 8 by root 2 is just 8 root 2. And then root 2 by root 2 is 2. OK, and then you divide the 8 by the 2 so that you end up with 4 root 2s. OK, you don't have to divide the root 2 by 2 in this case. So, for example, if I had 4x over 2, wouldn't you just have uh, 2x in that case? OK, so in a similar ma manner, the root 2s um, doesn't get divided. It's just the number on the outside. OK, 2. x minus y. 
So that's 4 plus root 3 over root 2 minus 4 minus root 3 over root 2. OK, and be careful because it's the whole term that's minus. So it's minus 4, but it's minus minus root 3 as well. So again, a common denominator of root 2. In this case, I have 4 plus root 3, and then I have minus 4. And then I have minus minus root 3, so minus minus is a plus root 3. So again, uh, I have some cancellations, 4 and 4. So in this case, I have uh, 2 root 3 over root 2. OK, again, you need to rationalize the denominator. So you're going to multiply above and below by root 2s. So I have 2 times root 6 over 2. OK, and then root 6 on your calculator. I just always put it in to make sure it doesn't simplify. And you get root 6. OK, so again, all of the rules coming into play, common denominator for fractions. Um, multiplying above and below, so you need to rationalize the denominator. This time you're multiplying thirds, so it's it's uh, this piece of theory here that we're using. Okay, and then the bottom root two by root two is two. Okay, part three. is x, y. So I have 4 plus root 3 over root 2 multiply by 4 minus root 3 over root 2. OK, not the easiest to multiply out. I would write it as 4 over root 2 plus root 3 over root 2. OK, over 4 over root 2 minus root 3 over root 2. So in other words, I'm just breaking out the fractions when it's written over root 2 like that. It can be easier for multiplication. And you, you might ever see this too in simultaneous equations. It might be easier just to break out the fraction as such. So it's 4 over root 2 and root 3 over root 2, 4 over root 2 minus. OK, and then it's 4 over root 2 by the two pieces and then back for the root 3. So that's where I'm going, just like you would multiply out any other brackets. So that's the same as 4 over root 2 by the second bracket plus root 3 over root 2 by that second bracket. OK, so top by top for 4s are 16, root 2 by root 2 is 2. 4 root 3 over root 2 by root 2 is 2. Plus top by top, 4 by root 3 over root 2 by root 2 is 2. Minus root 3 by root 3 is 3. Root 2 by root 2 is 2. OK. So minus 4 over root 3 cancels with minus 4 over root 3. 16 over 2 is 8. Minus 3 over 2. Or you can go 16 over 2 minus 3 over 2. 16, 15, 14. 13 over 2 is your answer. OK, so you can see or what I'm hoping you can see is that with with a little bit of practice of thirds, you get comfortable at multiplying them out. You just are a little bit more careful, but you treat them like you would any other number. Um, or especially how you would treat a fraction. Um, so they are harder, obviously, than, than um, natural numbers or integers, but the theory behind them is the same. OK, so let's try the division one then, x over y. So I have 4 plus root 3 over root 2 divided by 4 minus root 3 over root 2. OK, not the easiest. Um, so how do I divide fractions? Well, you take the bottom one and you invert it and then you multiply. 
So when we were doing fractions, do you know what? As far back as national school, we did this stuff where you divided, if you had a third divided by a fifth, you took the bottom fraction, you inverted it and you multiplied. Inverted it means you just swapped it around and you multiplied. Okay, that's how we divided and we learned that in national school. We tend to lose it as we travel through secondary school, but that's how you divide fractions. Okay, so what you'll see happening here is that the root two of the root two cancels and you're left with four plus root three over four minus root three. Okay, um, so it's a division. So I need to rationalize the denominator. So in this case, I'm going to multiply by four plus root three on the bottom, because I know that's what's going to get rid of the thirds. That's what's going to cancel the, the four root trees in the center when I change the sign in the middle. And what I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. Okay, so that ends up being um, four plus root three by four plus root three on the top over four minus root three by four plus root three at the bottom. And if you're doing this and you don't get the thirds on the bottom to cancel, then you know you've done something wrong. Okay, so on the top, four fours, 16 plus four root three plus four root three plus root three by root three is three. On the bottom, four fours are 16 minus four root three plus root four root three first minus four root three minus by plus is a minus root three by root three is root three. Okay, and as expected, they cancel and I get 16 and three is 19 plus eight root threes over 16 minus three is 13. Okay, so again, I, I, a great, a great question for figuring out if you understand the theory that I just gave in those pieces. So I would encourage you to practice that a couple of times until you see all of the different pieces coming into play. If you've enjoyed this video, then why not join us in IT Sligo and use maths in practice. In conjunction with industry, we've designed an exciting new program in electronics and self-driving technologies which uses cutting edge techniques such as artificial intelligence, computer vision and virtual and augmented reality. You'll need a H5 in maths to qualify. Check out the link below.